Hello and welcome to Football Daily, where today we're looking at 10 of the worst January signings ever and seeing what those players have got up to since their ill-fated moves. 10. Denis Suarez Every club makes transfer mistakes, but perhaps no signing summed up one manager's tenure at a team better than Denis Suarez's January switch to Arsenal under Unai Emery in 2019. The coach pushed for Suarez over the scouting department's recommendation of Christopher Nkunku, and the wide man's previous work with Emery at Sevilla, plus his Barcelona pedigree, persuaded the Gunners to part with a £2 million loan fee, as well as nearly 60 k a week in wages. Unfortunately, Suarez couldn't get fit, and in 12 weeks with the club played just 95 minutes, during which time he had no shots, created one chance, and was dispossessed three times. Sent back to Barca early, he ended up costing Arsenal £29,500 for each minute he played, but somehow boyhood club Celta Vigo were impressed, forking out 16 million euros to return Suarez to Galicia that summer. Now mostly featuring as a central midfielder, Suarez's form has picked up back in Vigo, with 9 goals and assists in 35 starts, though the team avoided relegation by a single point in 2019-20. His continued mediocrity and Nkunku's success at Leipzig make this one of Arsenal's most bewildering transfers ever. 9. Steven Kolker Many teams invest heavily when they're promoted from the championship, but if they get relegated again, they're stuck trying to loan out stars whose wages they can no longer afford. That's what happened to QPR in 2015-16, who loaned out 21 players during the campaign in an attempt to balance the books, including Stephen Kolker, who spent the first half of the season at Southampton, appearing just three times under Ronald Koeman. That meant it was no surprise when Kolker's deal was terminated in January, but his next move was a shock, with Liverpool swooping for the centre-back. Swapping Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank for Jurgen Klopp must have filled Kolker with hope, but it seemed the German had no idea who he had signed, throwing Kolker on as a makeshift striker in his first three appearances for the Reds. They would prove to be his only games at Anfield, despite a rollercoaster campaign for Liverpool seeing them finish eighth, two places below Southampton. Kolker returned to the second tier before a spell in Scotland with Dundee and a 2018 switch to Turkey, where he currently features for Alanyaspor. Though still just 29, we don't see another Premier League stint in Kolka's future. 8. Lucas Silva After missing out on Neymar in 2013, Real Madrid were determined to snap up the next Brazilian superstar, and in 2015, they were triumphant when they beat Arsenal to the signing of Cruzeiro midfielder Lucas Silva. Costing around 15 million euros, Silva was handed a whopping five-and-a-half-year deal, and was expected to rival Asier Iaramendi and Toni Kroos for the vacant Xavi Alonso role at the base of the Madrid midfield. It didn't work out that way. The 22-year-old appeared just eight times for Los Blancos before they loaned him out to Marseille, but after just six months in France, the club tried to palm him off on Anderlecht, leaving Silva out of the squad when he refused to go. However, worse was to come, as a medical prior to a move to Sporting CP detected an irregular heartbeat, forcing Silva to sit out a whole year before eventually rejoining Cruzeiro. Real Madrid cancelled his contract in 2019, and, now 27, Silva is once again playing regular football with Gremio back in his homeland. Remarkably, he's played just 82 times in the six years since he arrived in Spain, two games fewer than he managed in the two seasons before. 7. Seydou Doumbia Remember FIFA legend Seydou Doumbia? The Ivorian striker was one of Europe's most intriguing talents back in 2015 at CSKA Moscow, having scored an incredible 141 goals over the previous six and a half seasons, an average of 0.7 a game and 22 a year in that time. So Roma, then three points off league leaders Juventus in a cagey Italian title race, understandably thought the 27-year-old could tip the balance in their favour, and spent 14 million euros to get the switch done. Dumbia appeared in 13 of the Giallarossi's remaining 17 games, but only scored twice, as Roma finished 17 points off top spot. His lack of pace and sharpness prompted rumours about his age, and even 38-year-old Francesco Totti saw more minutes over the run-in, as well as contributing three more goals than Dumbia. Roma loaned him out four times over the next three seasons, including to Newcastle, and though a spell with Basel saw him score 20 in 25 to win the Swiss league and earn the golden boot, his credibility was shot at the highest level. Dumbia signed with Hirona in 2018, but was instantly relegated. And though he went back to Switzerland with Zion, he was sacked in March 2020 after refusing a pay cut during the coronavirus crisis. At 33, he remains without a club. 6. Guido Carrillo Southampton's story over the last decade has been one of diminishing firepower, and arguably their lowest ebb came in January 2018. 
At the time, Saints were 18th with 4 wins and 24 goals in 24 games under Mauricio Pellegrino. And in a desperate attempt to beat the drop, they spent a club record £19 million on Guido Carrillo in the winter window, an Argentinian forward from Monaco who had 12 goal involvements in just 7 starts over the preceding 18 months. The limited minutes indicated that Carrillo was a risk, but Pellegrino knew him from Estudiantes and pushed for the signing. But swapping Tomar Lamar and Bernardo Silva for Stephen Davis and James Ward-Prowse unsurprisingly hit the striker's output hard, as he dropped from 3 shots per game to 2 and 0.6 xG per 90 to 0.2. He ended up starting just 7 times, and when Pellegrino was sacked in March, Mark Hughes went full Brexit, ditching Carrillo for Charlie Austin and Shane Long. Carrillo has spent the last two years on loan at Leganes and would still be a Southampton player if the club hadn't reached an agreement to terminate his contract in October 2020, allowing him to join Spanish side Elche. He scored just eight times since 2018. 5. Shoya Nakajima This is one move you may not have heard of. Japanese attacker Shoya Nakajima was shining for Portuguese side Porto Menense back in 2019 bagging 30 goals and assists in 42 appearances for the mid-table minnows in the course of a season and a half, and attracting interest from Wolves. But as clubs circled for the then 24-year-old, Qatari side Al Duhail swooped in with an enormous €35 million Euro bid, making Nakajima the 19th most expensive January signing ever and the costliest Japanese player of all time. It's hard to see what Al Duhail were hoping for. A distant second to league leaders Al Sadd, they had no chance of silverware, and Nakajima didn't offer the star power of other foreign players in the division, like Xavi and Samuel Eto'o. Nakajima played just seven matches, scoring once, and when the summer came, Aldo Heil accepted a 12 million euro bid from Porto for the forward, meaning each game he played in Qatar cost the team roughly 3.3 million euros, excluding wages. Yet to regain form in Portugal, Nakajima has started only six league games since summer 2019, failing to score and assisting twice in that time. At 26, there's time for him to recover, but his Qatari holiday may have cost him a more fulfilling career. 4. Andy Carroll Fernando Torres' move from Liverpool to Chelsea in January 2011 is often regarded as one of the worst in Premier League history. But while the Spaniard won three trophies at Stamford Bridge, including the Champions League, his replacement had no such luck. Andy Carroll cost the Reds £35 million of the 50 they made on Torres, and at 22 years old and with 28 league goals in the previous year and a half, he was regarded as a smart investment. Unfortunately, he quickly lost the spotlight to fellow January arrival Luis Suarez and went on to find the net just six times in 44 Premier League appearances at Anfield, leaving for West Ham after only 18 months. Incredibly, the Hammers paid a then-club record £15 million for the Englishman and handed him a whopping six-year contract, but their fate was not repaid, with Carroll making over 20 league appearances just once between 2013 and 2019, and never again scoring 10 goals in a year, while earning £28 million over the course of his deal. Since 2019, Carroll has been back at Newcastle, but his injuries outnumber his goals 3-1 to one since then. At 32, his youth's potential is well and truly forgotten. 3. Chris Samba Another QPR clown show, Chris Samba wasn't always a joke. The Congolese centre-back had been tipped for big things during a five-year spell with Blackburn, linked with Tottenham and Arsenal. But when a horror campaign set the club on course for relegation in 2012, he jumped ship mid-season for cash-rich Anzi Makashkala, joining forces with Samuel Eto'o and Roberto Carlos. His time in Russia was unhappy, marred by racism, and Samba jumped at the chance to return to the Prem after a year, switching to Harry Redknapp's QPR, who paid £12.5 million for his services in January 2013. Given a huge £100,000 a week, the defender arrived at a club bottom of the division and quickly established himself in the starting 11, but QPR won just two and lost nine of their remaining 14 games, conceding 1.6 goals a match and finishing bottom. To make matters worse, Samba clashed with critical fans on Twitter, telling them to get over his hefty pay packet. Anzi didn't bear a grudge at Samba's mid-season departure and paid £12 million to bring Samba back to Russia, where he spent another three years before periods with Panathinaikos and Aston Villa brought his career to an end. He retired in 2018 at the age of 34, having never won a trophy. 2. Julien Faubert no one could believe it when West Ham's injury-prone wide man Julien Faubert was targeted by Real Madrid in January 2009, not even Faubert. Called by a Madrid representative to discuss a switch, Faubert thought he was being punked. I told him I had to prepare for an important game and I had no time for this shit, 
he told The Athletic in 2020. I turned off my phone. But amazingly, the interest was real and Real paid £1.5 million to complete the deal after failing to sign Antonio Valencia from Wigan. Capped just once by France, Faubert suddenly found himself at the Bernabeu holding up the famous white shirt next to Alfredo Di Stefano. Over the next few months, Faubert played just twice, gaining more attention for falling asleep on the bench during a game. But when he returned to West Ham, he was greeted with open arms, helping the Irons beat the drop the following season, then playing a key part in their promotion when they had been demoted in 2011. Following that, Faubert began clocking up the air miles, playing in Turkey, France, Scotland, Finland and Indonesia, and changing his international allegiance to Martinique, for whom he scored five goals in ten caps. His most recent football came as player and assistant manager in the fourth tier of French football in 2019-20 but his greatest claim to fame will always be as the strangest signing in Real Madrid history. 1. Kostas Mitroglu With relegation on the cards this season, Fulham may look for January reinforcements, but they'll be anxious to avoid another Kostas Mitroglu. The Greek arrived in 2014 from Olympiakos for a club record £12.4 million and was on a hot streak at the time, with 14 in 12 before Christmas, making him the obvious signing over Fulham's other attacking target, a Real Sociedad winger called Antoine Griezmann. But that form quickly evaporated. Signed by René Merlinstein, Mitroglou wasn't trusted by the Dutchman's successor Felix Magat, appearing just three times in a white shirt and failing to net as Fulham finished 19th. However, the sting of relegation was softened by a title winner's medal for his part in Olympiacos season, and as soon as he left Craven Cottage, he rediscovered his shooting boots, scoring 71 goals and earning another three titles over the following three years, first returning to Athens before a stellar two-season spell with Benfica. According to former Fulham star Danny Murphy, Mitroglou was actually signed on the basis of his FIFA stats. Though with 10 trophies in four different countries since his departure from English football, EA looks smarter than Fulham on this one. Mitroglou is now in the Netherlands with PSV. So those are what 10 of the worst January transfer signings ever are up to right now, but who should we have included? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure that you give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell to never miss a video. We'll see you next time.